Hey guys, how is everybody doing with the brand new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movie coming out this week? I've decided to review the other six Ninja Turtle movies. I'm not going to be reviewing every single one of them. I'm going to be reviewing the main ones, the first three from the 90s, the 2007 animated movie, and the two Michael Bay produced Ninja Turtle movies uh, leading up to the new Mutant Mayhem. With that being said, let's get on with it. Before I give you my thoughts on this movie, I want to talk about how important this movie is for me. Now, I'm going to say this right now. I'm not the hugest fan of the Ninja Turtles, but I am a big fan because I grew up watching them when I was younger. They were some of my favorite movies to watch when I was younger. And the first two Ninja Turtle movies were two Ninja Tur were two movies that I repeatedly watched over and over. My cousin and I love this franchise. Like, I would just go over to her house and just watch these movies and TV shows with her. Now, I will say this too, I have not finished the entire Ninja Turtles series uh, back in the 80s, I've not seen the complete one, but I have seen the first season and half of the second season. But this first movie and its sequel are two very important movies for me and two that I've seen countless times growing up. They were part of my childhood, but after re-watching them a few years later, what do I think about them? Well, you're about to find out. Positive on the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie is the way that they brought the Ninja Turtles and Splinter to life. They did a damn good job bringing them to life, and it just shows that you don't need CGI or weird shit to bring the Ninja Turtles to life because using practical effects is always the way to go in it with a movie. Because to me, these Ninja Turtles and Splinter are the best looking out of every other movie or sequel or whatever. They look their best here. A lot of people are going to argue that a lot of their interpretations of the Ninja Turtles look much better than this. I disagree. This is the way that they need to start bringing Ninja Turtles to life. Fuck Michael Bay and his CGI. Fuck all these production companies saying like, oh, they need to be animated. They need to be CGI. When you bring them to live action, you need to do what they did in the 90s and bring them back to Muppeteers because they were great with, like, the stunt performers in them and all that, being able to do all this, especially Splinter, though. Splinter, he didn't really need too much work when it came to movement, but he, he did a pretty good job. They did a pretty good job with them. Another thing with the costumes is something that I have an issue with with some movies today, and that's, like, with the ad-lipping. But they do a really good job here because they do it a pretty good way to where it matches the, what they're saying and everything. That's something I have a problem with today now. I love how they brought these Ninja Turtles to life. They're some of my... And every time I think about great practical f effects and great, like, costume designs and everything, I usually think about the original 1990 Ninja Turtles movie. I don't really talk about this much in some of my reviews, but that's the four, uh, four Huh? <laughs> fight choreography in this movie. Now, there's some great in the John Wick franchise, which I have reviewed, but I didn't talk about it much for some reason. But to me, it was special in this movie because it's like actual stunt performers having to wear these heavy ass suits and perform all of these moves like punching, rolling around, doing flips, dancing, uh, excuse me, and what that is, is that that's very impressive when you think about it. Having to wear a heavy-ass suit, which I actually watched behind the scenes. They said it was like 50 to 45 pounds at least. Imagine you having to do dancing, fighting, um, flips in a 45 to 50 pound suit. No thank you. Because the reason I like that so much is just how impressive that is. I applaud them for doing what they were able to do back in 1990 for able to put themselves through like so much punishment just to get all this done like that's great like it's not their actors who voice them it's not them it's stunt performers who have been doing this basically their whole lives like that's very impressive for a person like i applaud them for that that's why i love the fight choreography throughout this movie because when they're doing all these dance moves it's like not dance moves, fight moves, and punching people, doing flips, doing this, like, cool kung fu shit. It's like, you gotta keep in mind, that's a heavy-ass suit, that's stunt performers. I applaud you.
It goes along with that, but I really like the action in this movie. The action in this movie, along with the uh, fight choreography, which is just awesome, because, like, the whole fight scenes between, like, the Foot Clang, Shredder, and, uh, hell, even, like, with, uh, Casey Jones in one scene, where Rafa, Raphael fights Casey Jones and everything, that, that's great action sequences, like, even when Ra uh, Raphael fights the Foot Clang, uh, saving April O'Neil by the subway station, I love the action in this movie. It's great. It's great fight choreography. It just, like, puts you on the edge of the seat. Like, this is so cool. This is a 1990 movie. And it's a bunch of fucking turtles fighting people. But this is awesome. Like, they're doing so good. It's a great action movie. Like, sure, it's not... Well, it's not technically an action movie. But the action that's, that is in this movie, it's very cool. Like I said, the fight choreography, it's a very cool. It's very impressive for what they were able to do. They did a pretty good job with the action sequences, with all the fighting and all, just everything. It's cool. It's cool. I really felt that the writers catch the uh, uh, got the dynamic between the brothers because if you play the the play, if you uh, watch the TV show and read the comic books of the Ninja Turtles, then you know there's a lot of like dynamic between the brothers, like Mikey and. Uh, Donatello, those two kind of just are friendly, and they hang out a lot, and they do stupid shit together, but what I'm really talking about is Leonardo and Raphael, because those two in the comic books and the TV series and throughout the rest of these movies, those two have always had budding heads and always, like, fought each other and always disagreed between things and always always get into fights with each other. I felt they did a pretty cool, a pretty good idea bringing that to screen and everything. Especially that whole scene where Raphael is like wondering, he's like, why are we staying here? We should be going out there looking for Splinter. And then Leo's just like, we have to wait for April. She's the only way that we can get to her. Like, you look, you kind of like agree with Raphael. Like, yeah, they should be going out there looking for Splinter. But at the same time, Leo's right because they're like, well, they can't find Splinter because... April's the only way to them, and they can't go out during the day because they're basically freaks to society, and they can't let anybody see them and let them know that they exist. Like, that whole fighting between them, that one scene is very cool, and then when they finally make it up later, like, their fighting scenes, like, you feel the their anger, and then when other scenes, when they're making up and hugging and being bros, you're like, oh, it's such a heartfelt moment. They did a pretty good idea capturing the the feelings of the brothers and the dynamic of the brothers, like Michelangelo and Donatello, those two are always the fun ones and always having fun. But uh, Leo and Raphael are the ones that are trying to keep together, always fighting, always stand, always kind of like the tough ones out of all the groups. I think that's why Michelangelo is probably my favorite. The positive is where some people actually don't like this for some reason, and that's the dark tone of the movie. Now, I will agree that for a kid's movie, it has a pretty dark tone and that they shouldn't really be watching it. But, if you watch the, no, watch, if you read the comic books, the original comic books of the Ninja Turtles, you'll find out that they were actually written for adults, not children. They are a very adult-heavy comic books. They were written for adults. They were very violent with the swords and all that, because if you watch some of the Ninja Turtle movies and TV shows today, uh, Leonardo doesn't really use his swords for anything much. But when you read the comic books, like, he, uh, he does bad shit, basically. <laughs> but, a lot of people don't like that. I understand it, but for someone who loves those comic books and reads them, it's like, well, that that's the original Ninja Turtles for you, I guess. It's never really bothered me. I've always preferred the dark tone. It kind of, like, makes you like, hey, uh, this is New York City, one of the most crime-filled cities ever in the world. So, th to me, they did a pretty good job capturing that dark tone. On to my negatives, and I only have two. And my first one is Donatello. Um, It's not against him. I never hated his character. I've always loved his character. But, um, he doesn't have anything to do in this movie. He, like, literally does nothing in this movie. He's, like, overshadowed, he's overshadowed by the rest of the brothers. Because, like, Raphael, he's the dark one, and he's the one that gets injured later. And he's always, like, the aggressive one, and the, where the team kind of disagrees with him. And Leto, Leo, he's the uh, leader of the group, and he's, and so he has the most screen time, obviously. But Michelangelo's the most fun, and he's, like, a fan favorite, so he's always on screen. But Donatello, he's just, like, pushed to the side like he's nothing 
And to me, they did a pretty good job casting Corey Feldman as the voice of Donatello. And I love Corey Feldman. I love him in the Friday. Uh, I love him in Friday the Thirteenth, The Goonies, Stand by Me, The Lost Boys. And when I found out that he was casted as Dominic, uh, Dominic, what? Donatello in this movie, I was like, well, that's like perfect casting. And then people were like, oh yeah, but he's barely in it. I was like, I don't remember that. But I was, but after rewatching this, he's not in it much. So he's like pushed to the side, like he's garbage. Like it's like, what the, what the fuck, man? Like. Come on. I, I, I'm glad that he has more screen time in 2, which well, I'll get to more. But I would have rather seen a lot more Donatello in this movie. He hardly even has lines of dialogue. And if I'm right, he probably only has like 5 minutes of screen time at that. Barely in the movie has any lines of dialogue. It's like he's there. Like he'll just be there just sitting there. And he's like, I'm like, say something you bitch. Uh, the, I feel that his only memorable moment is if you pause the movie correctly, you can see the stunt performers' eyes and mouth inside the little suit, which is, like, very popular over now. But, yeah, he's just there, and that kind of upsets me. Final positive is that I don't fucking care for the Danny character in this movie. Danny is a teenager. He's a little shit. I don't care for him. He's just there, and he works for Shredder. He betrays them, like, well, does betray them. He gives away where they are, then all of a sudden he wants to be with them and all that, like, well, what the fuck, man? What? what? I, don't, I don't even know why he's in the movie. Is he just there so Splinter can give uh, wise, uh, wise things to say to him and give away his backstory? Is that all he's there for? I don't fucking care. I don't like his character. He's just there. Hell, he has more screen time than Donatello. Why? Oh, guys, to me, this movie age is pretty, pretty good. For this being a 90s movie, for this being... I I would understand if you call it pure 90s cheese that it doesn't age quite so well. I would understand you, but to me it doesn't age uh, too much. And it also has to have something to do with pure nostalgic because this movie is just a lot of fun. If you want to watch a fun 90 minute uh, Ninja Turtles movie, this movie's for you. So I would recommend that you go out and buy it. What do you guys think about the original 1990 Ninja Turtles movie? Have you seen this movie? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Let me know in the comments below and we will talk about it. And if you like this video, like it. If you love to subscribe, hit the bell notification so you will get notified for my latest videos. But until my next video, see you next time.